Does anyone feel like coming out of a turn leg is like birth? Hello, welcome back to my channel. Turtlenecks. I actually grew up not liking turtlenecks that much, but I feel like that's a separate story. I've evidently swung completely in the opposite direction and I love turtlenecks. I often get asked where I got the ones that you guys see in my videos. Most of them are thrifted, but we should just make our own. I'm going to try to cover off the whole turtleneck spectrum. You know, there's differences in height as well as whether they have like a totally finished edge or they're like a fold over. And since we're dealing with knit, I'm going to throw in some common embellishments that are going to make your knit items look a little extra nice. We're going to do lettuce hem. We're going to do like the drawstring ruche. Basically by the end of this, if you see a knit turtleneck-ish item on Instagram, you should be able to dissect how to put that thing together. Let me grab my fabric. This is not my painting. My mom did this. Bonus points if in the comments you know what scene this is. But the fabric I'm going to be working with today, one of them is this brown checkerboard fabric. It's a two-way stretch. I would not consider it a four-way stretch. The checkerboard print is quite fine, so it feels like one of those details you have to enjoy if you come up close. Maybe this wasn't the right idea for COVID-friendly wear. Stay far away though and just enjoy that it's roughly brown. Another really pretty knit fabric you can get your hands on would be a ribbed knit. And what's nice is it provides that oh, beautiful vertical line texture. Both of these are fabrics that I've been hoarding for a year now. I got them from the fabric room. I'm so excited to finally put these fabrics to use. Let's go. To help me have a starting point, I'm going to model the first turtleneck I make off of this really popular Marine Ser style. You've seen it on Beyonce, Dua Lipa, the Jenners. And it's quite fitted. It's got a mock neck, but basically if you lengthened it, you would get a turtleneck. I'm so excited about this fabric. It might be a little bit see-through, but okay, a lot. But you're gonna need a front, a back, two sleeves, and for the mock neck, you'll want two identical pieces that are slightly moon shape. I'll put photos of the patterns that we cut out so that you can get an idea of their layout. And I got jersey needles, which are rounded on the tip so they don't rip your fabric, they just pierce through the existing knit holes. Also, might be good to have a lint roller handy because it's about to get really linty with the knit fabric. And with knits, my main tip is just to be a little bit generous with the fabric at the beginning because every single piece of knit stretches a different amount and you don't want to copy your stretchiest knit on a stiffer knit and then find out that now it's too small. So this one, because it's cable knit, it's nice and dense and it doesn't have like insane stretch. So I felt safe using this as a guide. Since it's cut generously, there will be a little bit of trying on as you go. So first, let me baste the neck hole and arm holes so that when we try it on, we don't rip the fabric. Interjecting with a few extra notes. First, always make sure your maximum direction of stretch goes horizontally across the body and horizontally across the arms. The tighter you want your turtleneck to fit you, the stretchier the fabric you should buy because it has to be stretchy enough to make it over all the widest parts of your body before it can contour to the narrowest parts of your body. And finally, the upper collar is the hardest part to cut. Your two rules that you have to stick to is that the top edge of the collar should be able to go over your head when it's fully stretched and the bottom edge of your collar should be able to relax naturally around your neckline unstretched. Take those two measurements, give it a little bit of a curve and you should be good to start. I know this is like shoveling while the snow is still falling, but all of the holes where my body is going to stick out of this object have been basted. So I'm gonna sew the front and the back together along the shoulders and the sides. I'm gonna use a stitch that I've never used before on my machine. It's recommended as the best one to use for lightweight stretch, which I believe this is. So that's the stitch I'll be using, but if you don't have a whole bunch of crazy stitch options on your machine, just use a zigzag stitch. Perfectly fine on knit. It retains some stretch. Arrgh! I should have read my sewing machine manual a long time ago. This number four is the standard zigzag stitch that I always use, but my sewing machine manual told me to try number three. And it's great. 
she's like a little lightning bolt. All this stuff, when will the day come where I use these? All right, trying it on for a quick fit test. Everything is resting flat and comfortably. I think I will take the shoulders in just like a centimeter. It seems to hang off the edge. Obviously, if you want it to be like that, you can. Just gonna cut back a centimeter, but then slope it down so it all smooths out at the armpit. I need all of this to join with the sleeve. This is very close, but it is crawling and like cutting me off just a little bit. So I may scale that down a little bit too. But yeah, otherwise this is like, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that fit. I don't need it to be skin tight. <laughs> I'm, re I'm recording now, Dan. Next up is the sleeves. Right sides together along the straight edge. My lightning stitch. That's what I'm calling it now. I know it has a formal name, but it's lightning here. It's Judy Town. You don't need a Judy for this step, but I do find the dress form to be a little bit helpful personally in making sure I visualize everything correctly. But I've got the sleeves pinned to the body, right sides together, making sure I lined up the side seams as well as a little notch in the sleeve fabric with the shoulder and then everything else gets distributed pretty evenly. Lightning stitch all the way around. She's got arms. Uh. For the collar, I first sewed the inner and outer layers together along the top here, and then I sewed the short ends together to form that complete collar donut. This is also a good time to test that this actually fits over your head. If so, then pin and sew it to the neck hole, just like we did with the sleeves. Unfortunately, I actually was a bit disappointed with this first attempt. The collar was a bit too floppy for me, and I should have understitched it for a crisper top edge, so I did recut it for a second try. Does anyone feel like coming out of a turtleneck is like birth? To help the collar have a crisper edge, I added an understitch to the top here, and then I also understitched it here where it joins so that it stands up and the raw fabric always points down. But as you can see, it's still a little floppy. Maybe a lining would have knocked that out of the park, but I also, I don't know, I was hesitant if it would make the texture and structure look a little mismatched and funny. I'm gonna figure out an easy, little addition to just make it like that because I feel like that looks so much nicer. And for the edges here, just gonna use an elastic band, zigzag stitch, turn it in twice. That will give it a nice clean edge and then it's done. Okay, future Wendy just jumping in here to explain <laughs> what I decided to do with the back. There's a two little snap closures right here. These outer ones are snap closures as well. And then once it's worn, all of this is flush across the back. Of course, you can see a little bit of a fold, but I feel like this was a pretty fast and easy way to make this fabric work, given that it just doesn't have like that insane amount of stretch that could have made a super skinny neck possible. Because of reasons, I will wait until the end this time to show you how all the turtlenecks turned out. So the other way you can make a turtleneck collar is that it's one single layer instead of double layered like the previous one, and that gives you the option to scrunch it down if it were a softer fabric. Following the exact same guide as the brown turtleneck, Julia helped me cut out these pieces from this beautiful blue rib knit also from the fabric room. Love this fabric. So excited to finally use it. To mix it up, I used my gray knit dress that I own as a guide. This one hits, I think, like just above the knee. But honestly, it's literally a tube. So as long as you give yourself enough breathing room to be comfortable, you should be good. To show a diverse range of options, going to try a lettuce hem edge on this dress and going to give it a drawstring ruche adjustable up the side. I tried it on after the front, the back, and the sleeve were all attached. You should always do this because every knit has a different amount of stretch, so you just want to be sure how exactly this one is lying on your own body. There is some extra fabric at the underarm, armpit, and side, so Julia helped me slim that away just by pinching it in from the inside. And the first stab was a little bit long. I kind of wanted to go for something just below the knee. I found a tutorial online that shows how to do a lettuce hem on a regular, regular sewing machine, so let me give that a test run. If it works well, I'll put the link in the description. Ooh, okay. This is my first attempt. It's not bad. I wanna decrease the stitch length 
just a little bit. The blog says to use a satin stitch if possible. I'm using number eight, which is an overcast for stretch fabrics. I had it at 2.0 stitch length, but I've knocked it down to 1.0. And you're supposed to be sewing over a folded edge, ideally pressed, but since this is just a trial, I just got it folded. We're gonna be applying maximum tension as we sew. And the finishing touch is to cut away the excess at the place where you folded it. They say to fold in about an inch, so they're basically saying you would lose approximately an inch of fabric. And it really is a clean edge. This is just to show the finished clinical trials. Number one, two, three from top to bottom. And as you can see, the bouncier curls are down here, which is great. Got my pressed edges. Let us hem. Wow, what a success. It's also seriously an arm workout. Now I just gotta trim these and also not accidentally nick all the way through. That would be very sad. Okay, I feel like there's a world where I would be very happy with just this dress, but I'm trying to show you guys some diverse personalization options out here because what is the point of sewing other than putting your own spin on it? I mean, there's a lot of other points too, but that's the one that I'm leaning on today. <laughs> to take your dress up one level of drama, you gotta make these two long ties. It's just a strip of this blue fabric sewn right sides together and then flipped inside out. Feels like I'm in the Chinese restaurant making pulled noodles for you, but anyways, not edible. These are roughly the length from my armpit to the bottom of the dress. If it's longer, more drama, fancy tails. I'm gonna sew these two to the armpit under the right side. After that, take one last long rectangular strip. You're gonna sew it on the inside of the dress so that you're completely covering the two strings, but then you add one more stitch down the middle so that they all stay in their own lane. That way your drawstring is done, and I'm ready to show you how it all came together. been hinting for a little bit that we have some changes and then I tried to throw you off the scent with our little kitten. I mean, she has been a pretty significant change too. I don't really know what else there is to share about this, but if you guys have any questions or you're keen for some maternity slash baby types of DIYs slash kitten types of DIYs, let me know in the comments. I am gonna start putting out a couple of vlogs which will also include how I've been really honing my ability to cook Chinese food over the last year. But otherwise, sewing and learning as usual. If you make any of your beautiful knit creations, hashtag made with Wendy so I can find it and love it. I'll have more photos of this sweater and the blue one on my Instagram, at with Wendy. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.